we're going to do to begin off is we're going to make a cube so we can go create we're going to use polygon primitives and then cube right. and you should get a prompt here they'll say drag the base on the grid and pull up for the height okay so you click and drag this is live so it won't go in place until you let go of your left mouse button and we'll drag it roughly a square as square as we can let go you get another one saying click and drag to set the height click remember keep down your mouse button and we're going to drag up for the height okay there we go right uh, so remember f focus in on whatever you're working on and A will show you all. So we've only got one item in there. Uh, right. Up in the uh, top right hand corner, in my, you've got a couple of different little tabs here. You get the attribute editor, which is the one that it's meant to look like a bunch of little kind of folders. Uh, you've got the tool settings in the middle, it's a little spanner. And then you have your channels box, your layer editor. So if you want to turn any of these on, you just click, and it'll turn it on. So you can toggle them on and off. So sometimes you might find it handier to work in the uh, the attribute editor. It's just like little tab view. Sometimes you might want to use your channels box. Right. So if you click on the attribute editor, which is the first one, uh, you should get a list of kind of tabs, I guess. Click on Polycube. Which is the um, controls the width, height, depth, how many subdivisions this object has. Uh, if you're in the, the channels box and the layer editor down the bottom here under inputs, you can turn it on that way as well. It's just the same way. But we'll use this one because it's kind of cleaner, easier to use. So we're going to set the width to 10. You notice it changes straight away. You set the depth to 10. So that means it's actually a perfect square now. And we're going to set the height to 20. Maximally 25. So it's a low. There we go. Right. So at the minute, uh, all we can see is like a outline version of our model where we can still spin our camera. We can move around. Um, this is in what's called a wireframe view. If you push five on the keyboard, we'll go into what's called a shader view. Another way to change that is if you go to shading up here, you can see we've got a list of options. Okay, so we can switch back to wireframe. Four is the shortcut for wireframe. Five is the short for smooth shade. Turn on wireframe on shaded. And what that means is, whenever we click off, we can still see the wireframe of an object. It's just nice to work in this world. Right, uh, so whenever you click on an object, it's highlighted green. That means you've got it selected. Um, so there's different selection modes in Maya, same as kind of different working modes. Uh, the way you change them, you hold down your right click on an object, you get a little box appears. Okay, um, so this box lets us work in different modes so we can select different types of uh, components so by default you'll be an object click on your object and we're going to grab this move tool here which is W on your keyboard and we're just going to use the green arrow and click and drag it up a bit there we go right. um, your best always use arrows don't use this middle section because that'll move it in any direction you want to move it one direction at a time and when you go into vertex modeling it'll make it a lot better you won't end up shifting your objects in the wrong way so better way to avoid mistakes right uh, what we're going to do next is we're going to go to edit mesh I'm going to use a tool called insert edge loop tool okay. the reason we're going to do this is we're going to want to cut out uh, these shapes, the shapes of these drawers. Okay. So we'll go edit mesh, insert edge loop tool. 
this is another one that's live so uh, it'll say click drag on edges so these blue lines are what's called edges if you notice if I click and hold down this little green line appears going around that's where the edge lips gonna be so basically what it is it's like a knife cuts through uh, the object and it's gonna leave us another set of lines that we can work with so remember your edge lips go in opposite to whatever bit you click on so if I click on this vertical line my edge lips gonna go in horizontally I'm just gonna go in and I'm not gonna be too accurate I'm just gonna jot these in Now the annoying thing about this tool is it, it doesn't turn itself off, so it's still on, even though I'm moving around my object, it's still there. So I'm going to put in another two, one there, and one there. Okay. Now remember to turn off this tool. So click on the red arrow, and then click on a bit of space, a bit of empty space because that tool will stay on and it gets really really annoying okay um, it, it also switches you straight into what's called edge mode so you notice when we hold over these edges now we can select them it puts us straight in that mode okay. so I go back into object mode just to show you these are the little divisions we made um, if at any stage any of this goes wrong just you can undo by using Z or edit undo and you just tap Z till you get back to it that you're okay with. Right. Uh, next thing we're going to do is we're going to go into what's called face mode. Okay. So as soon as you're in face mode, you'll notice we can select these big chunks of uh, the model. Okay. So these bits that are surrounded by edges. So what we're going to do is we're going to select all these front ones. So you hold down Shift on your keyboard that'll add to your selection okay so if you select a bit by mistake you hold down shift keep shift held down and click on it that'll deselect it so we just want these ones selected um, spin around your model to make sure you haven't selected anything else people do it all the time I still do it um, so what we're going to do now is you know, edit mesh and we're going to extrude okay as soon as we hit extrude, we'll get these set options appear here. So if we grab the blue arrow, pull it out a bit. There we go. So what the extrude tool does is, I'll just quickly show you here at the very top. Um, whenever you extrude, it makes a exact copy of whatever face you selected okay and you can scale that or move it okay. so the one of the most common problems in 3d modeling is someone will extrude and then push extrude again so you've actually made two copies of it so good habit to get into is every time you extrude make sure you move the ob move the the face that you just extruded. Make sure you do something with it. Scale it, move it, just do anything at all, uh, and you'll stop yourself from getting like these double faces that appear. Okay, so we've got um, we got like a drawer. Can extrude it out for each of these. Um, but what we want to do is we'll put a bit of kind of extra detail in here so uh, what you do is make sure you're in face mode so hold on your right click on your object hold over face and we're going to select this top face now we're not going to extrude it uh, we're just going to go to the move tool which is W and using this arrow here we're just going to drag it in this direction okay there we go right So what we're going to do next is we you grab this top face here and this time we're going to extrude it. OK. 
Okay. So as soon as you extrude it, would you go straight to your scale tool, which is R on your keyboard? It's over here in the control panel. And we're going to scale it in in these two directions. Okay. And then we're going to extrude again, and this time we're just going to pull it straight down. kind of a, a bit of an open drawer there we go right so we want to make a bit of a flush end on the end of this so something that actually come out, comes out a bit because if this was a real drawer it would need some kind of border on the outside to stop it from slipping the whole way through uh, so if you select this face so make sure you're in face mode again like this face, uh, if you push F on the keyboard, we'll zoom in on it. We'll edit mesh, extrude. We'll go straight to your scale tool, and we're going to use the yellow one or the one that's located right in the middle. We're going to scale it up a tiny bit. Okay, so just click and drag in that yellow box, and you can you can scale it till you you're happy enough with it. There we go. Uh, there we're going to hit edit mesh extrude again and this time we're just going to pull it out using that arrow okay okay so these arrows are just pointing in the direction of the movement okay honey Ptolemyas if you just remember arrows are always moving and little cubes are always scaling okay, so if we push a see all you see now we've got a bit of a, a lip on that. Uh, it looks a bit better. Okay, so we got a um here's our model for an object mode. We'll just swing around here. Uh, so we've done the first bit. So the first drawer. Um and what we're gonna go do it now is just go through and do the same for the rest. So Make sure in face mode, so hold down your right click, go into face mode. So I'm just holding command to spin around a tiny bit so I can get a better view. Edit mesh, extrude, go straight to your scale tool using the yellow one. Go scale out a tiny bit. Uh, edit mesh, extrude again. And using the blue arrow, we're just going to pull it forward a tiny bit. Okay. This first lesson is just getting used to using Maya, um, you'll notice when I'm zoomed in on a section I drag my camera and it seems to like shift up and down uh, if you have a middle click turn down your mouse if you hold command on a Mac or alt on a PC and middle click and drag uh, you just shift your camera up and down, it's, it's really handy so it's worthwhile setting up whenever you log on the machine just make sure you get the middle click turned on is very handy. Right. Um, okay, so what I want to do is I want to get this drawer, make it look like it's sitting in the way. Uh, so if you're in face mode, go grab his face here. We're not going to extrude it. Go go to the move tool. I'm going to drag it back inside. Right. Notice if you keep dragging, that'll keep going. So you just want to drag it so it's somewhere inside the model. And now you see it looks like the drawer is actually sitting open, it's got a proper inside. Okay. So save your file there. So we'll go file, save scene as, and uh, give it a name. So call it filing cabinet. Then just hit save as. 